Welcome back, beautiful Tri-State area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in our Hydration with Heart segment, brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut, live from my heart headquarters right here in Midtown Manhattan. We're featuring the awesome Blaise French. He's an influencer and entrepreneur with close to 4.5 million followers and counting. He's also the former marketing manager for Body Armor Sports Drink. Now, Blaze scored big with Coca-Cola's buyout for $5.6 billion, proving he has an amazing track record in branding. He's partnered with brands such as Milk Bar, Target, or what I like to call Target, Banana Republic, Stads, True Religion, Fashion Nova Men, the list goes on and on. More recently, Aloe and Manscaped. He is now officially the Assistant Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Once Upon a Coconut. A big congratulations to him for that. He joins me today to chat all about the power of branding and marketing and how social media has changed the marketing field. Welcoming now to the show is the awesome and my dear friend, Blaise French. Welcome, superstar. Zen Sans, what's up, my girl? Great to be here. Thank you so much. God bless. Happy New Year. The New New Year Year rang in a lot of a lot of uh, (laughs) exciting stuff for you. So can you tell us a little bit more about your journey from being uh, marketing over at Body Armor Sports Drink to becoming assistant VP of sales and marketing at Once Upon a Coconut? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, that Body Armor run was very legendary. It started in 2012 and it finished up in 2021 with a big sale of Coca-Cola for five point six billion dollars. Um, but the learnings and the relationships um, and, and things I learned and, you know, from Body Armor, I'm now happy to take it over um, to Once Upon a Coconut and look to implement those same skills and, and relationships that I learned to Body Armor and bring it over to Once Upon a Coconut. Well, that's extremely important, and that's why they chose you. Your notable success in branding, especially uh, this Coca-Cola buyout that you're talking about, Uh, implemented key strategies. Now, what key strategies do you believe contributed to such a significant achievement? I think that sales and marketing have to be on the same side. And at Body Armor, we were uh, very on the same page. So when we ran promotions at Targets and Walmarts, we would partner up with the local, um, you know, athletic events or 5Ks that's going going around, you know, the area um, so when people would, you know, have a basketball game, they would be dehydrated, and then the Walmart up the block would be, have a sale, a 5 for 5 or a 4 for 5. So we would direct traffic directly from that event to the retail. So just being on the same pages there and kind of aligning with the right um, celebrities or influencers um, with the brand. You know, Kobe Bryant was a big um, influence for us at Body Armor. Um, so, you know, bring those same, you know, tools and and, uh, and strategies over to Once Upon a Coconut. You got to be on your A game and that you are on. Now, how did you approach building and maintaining a strong brand image during your tenure at Body Armor, um, all while competing with Gatorade? Yeah, you know, social media, I, I had to turn to social media because, you know, going against Gatorade in the streets is really hard. You know, if you go into a store, you see nothing but Gatorade. Um, or Snapple or Arizona and you know you got to turn to social media where the kids are and where the eyeballs are so that's what kind of drew me to you know come up with social media plans and um, and strategies there and and that's how the following grew and that's how Body Armor grew Um, just because Gatorade had a 50-year head start Um, but on Instagram Instagram's new and they weren't on Instagram like that so um, we kind of took it our initiative to you know, get into those new fields. Um, so social media, coming onto radio. Um, I wish I had, you know, knew you back when I was doing body. I mean, maybe we would have sold for $10 billion instead of $5 billion. <laughs> yes. um, But now, you know, now we're here. Uh, so Once Upon a Coconut, we're definitely going to be doing some social media pushes and um, many other strategies as well. Of course, when you talk about the motivation to turn to social media, it's because it's all about social selling yeah. and targeting that that demographic, those Gen Alphas, those Gen Zers uh, that you otherwise would not be able to find. And so your experience is working with these diverse brands like Milk Bar and Target and Banana Republic and Aloe and Manscaped. Those are a testament to your selection process, if you think of it. I mean, throughout the years, you have 
embraced social media influencer influencership, right? Influencership, if you call it, and you've become very active on Instagram and those brands reached out to you directly. And I think it's fantastic that you were able to pave the way for brands, you know, making sure that you're leveraging communities on social media with your four and a half million followers. Now, let's talk about marketing trends for 2024. So yeah. how do you see marketing evolving in, in 2024 and what trends do you think will shape the industry? Yeah, so something you said a little a little while ago, you said being selective and um, that's the key. I'm, I'm super selective with the brands that I work with. And, you know, when I work with a brand, I'm super selective with, you know, the marketing strategies we do. And, you know, working with Once Upon a Coconut, um, I definitely want to do the right things. You don't want to, you know, try to just do everything. You kind of want to be selective and be strategic. And retail is something very important. And, um, you know, then we were talking about retail, uh, such as Fairway, such as Stop and Shop, such as Target, um, which I have great relationships with. Um, so partnering with them, and, and they have a lot of initiatives and a lot of, like, athletic um, communities that they support. So going to them and, and kind of supporting what they have going on only helps in store. So instead of two facings, now we'll have four facings um, just because we gave them that support. Um, so definitely partnering up with, with the big retailers. And um, there's a ton of athletes I have. You know, I'm a huge Knicks fan and a huge Mets fan, and they have some guys over there that we're definitely looking at. So um, there's going to be some things coming for sure. Wow, you have a whole roadmap. I love it. It's <laughs> yeah. it's interesting that our ethos aligns when it comes to branding and marketing. You know, as a live radio host and even TV host, brands come to me every day to help share their story and be their voice and be their ambassador. And that selection process is is a marriage, right? At the end of the day, you have to be able to mesh with the brand, believe in the brand, uh, understand the brand's uh, mission and help them grow. So can you share the story behind Once Upon a Coconut and its mission, especially in the context of the hydration with heart segment? Yeah, um, being selective again and, and having a solid team is most important for me. And I have to be around people that I like to work with. And Once Upon a Coconut has a great team, um, starting with their founder, John, um, who's an amazing guy. And he's been very successful, but he's very solid and very uh, true to who he is, which I could, you know, relate to. And uh, and then they have Ray and Mark, um, who kind of run the sales and marketing, um, you know, of the, the company. And, and those guys are, you know, great guys, you know, to be around, whether, you know, we have a crappy product or, or a great product. Um, and then, you know, Zen is amazing. You know, I love Zen. Um, she's amazing. So, um, I just really love the team that we have. And, and a big shout out to Alan, who is the most incredible uh, graphics and design. And he is really the vision behind what the cans look like in the art. Him and Mark, you know, designed a very, very sleek looking can. There's a lot of um, uh, new new designs coming out in this year as well with an increase in products for the product line. So lots of exciting stuff. But what, what I specifically love about Once Upon a Coconut is that they give back. They give back 10% of every case of coconut sold. They give back to the community. They're big on the Down Syndrome Foundation in Florida. Uh, but more importantly, they are just true, true philanthropists, and they want to see uh, good come from this, from from this, you know, the world. So yeah. I truly big hat off to, to that team. Yeah. Now, let's chat brand power, which is essentially – the ultimate sway your business will have in its chosen market. And this involves thinking about how your business can create a product or service worth having and the power your business has to make that product worth much more than competitors in a crowded market. What is your advice here? Um, I mean, when I look at today's branding and I look at companies like Prime, where I don't necessarily love the product, um, but I love the marketing and I love the brand power um, that they're doing. Um, so I think, you know, as we talk about social and, and kind of just like building momentum and being a part of the right events, um, you know, we got to, you know, take our hats off to to brands like that. And, you know, Aloe is a company I love and, you know, their brand power is huge. And um, I just found out about them maybe two years ago when I moved to L.A., 
Um, but people were wearing, wearing it like it was Gucci or like a high luxury fashion brand. And that's what kind of drew my eye to it. And, um, you know, ever since I started working with them, I love the clothes and um, just kind of the people behind it as well. So I think like brand power has to do with a lot of, you know, the culture of, you know, the brand. And, um, you know, Once Upon a Coconut has that culture. Um, Body Armor had that culture. Um, and when people, you know, first try it, that experience, um, I would love to be like the face or the person that they meet when they first try because people never forget that experience and how someone make them feel. And um, something me and my friends keep saying is, I just want to feel good. And everybody just wants to feel good. And um, at Once Upon a Coconut, you know, we want to provide a high quality product and we want people to feel good. And, and as you said, you know, you know, the philanthropy aspect of it is, is really amazing and something I'm getting back, something I'm getting into more. Um, so I, I just, you know, want to make people feel good. It's so <laughs> important to give back. Yes. And that's why you have to drink the legend. Yes. Like Once Upon a Coconut. Now, from the financial services sector to restaurants and fashion brands, we know that appeasing your customer is key. And what we know is that the power of social media and a strong online presence is critical to building brand trust and loyalty. Consumers need and crave connectivity, and connectivity breeds community, and community breeds loyalty, and loyal customers feed the bank account. It's all <laughs> intertwined. Now, the top sellers rely on social media in an all-out, quote-unquote, effort to grow a business. The question is, why? Just like you buy online, over 25% of young Americans up to age 35, what we're talking about, buy directly from social media channels and make their decisions based on those social trends. And this is the new normal, right, Blaze? So for, for leaders and entertainers in business, the need to connect with peers and customers digitally has never been more imperative. And I think that's what you're really good at. For sure, for sure. You know, just making engaging content and, and, and doing things that's not repetitive. So um, I love to show a lifestyle and not just one thing. So I don't really just focus on fitness or just fashion. I focus on lifestyle because, you know, I do fitness, I do fashion, I like to travel, I like to go to great restaurants, I like to, you know, do a lot of different things. So I think more people can relate that way um, instead of just foc foc focusing on a niche market. Um, and, and that keeps people engaged because they're like, oh, you're at this restaurant, oh, you're traveling here, oh, you're doing this, oh, you're doing that. So it keeps them having to keep up with you instead of them already assuming what you're going to do. Like, oh, I already know what this post is. This is the same stuff he does every day or the same things. So, you know, as a brand, you know, Once Upon a Coconut, we definitely want to keep it fresh and, and um, do a lot of different things and, and keep the consumers guessing. And um, there's some new flavors coming out that I'm super, super excited about. Um, the You know, the chocolate coconut, chocolate coconut is my favorite. Um, but these new flavors that are coming, I'm super, super excited about and uh, that's what I'm talking about when I say, like, you know, keeping the consumers guessing. Yeah, for sure. And Once Upon a Coconut does a great job at keeping consumers guessing because there's always something exciting that they're working on uh, or, more importantly, a social um, campaign that they are part of that is, you know, drawing in a lot of traffic. But the most important thing when it comes to um, all of this is you have to have a great product. And Once Upon a Coconut is great in taste. It provides health benefits unlike water could, right? Because of all the electrolyte replacements, uh, potassium, magnesium, and more importantly, it's low in sugar and it's a natural product. And this was important for me. The cans are BPA free because of course now you definitely want to keep those chemtrails away and chemtrails can be found in anything. So if I'm drinking water to hydrate and replenish lost fluid or to, you know, as a pre-workout, I also want to make sure that the can I'm drinking drinking it out of um, is safe for consumption, which a lot of brands and companies don't uh, tick, you know, check that 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 box on their list. So yeah, lots of good stuff coming up. Well, we are at the end. Thank you so much for coming in studio and chatting with me, my darling. You are quite the impressive person, both on social media and um, and right here at headquarters. Thank you. Zen, you are the best. I love you so much. 
Um, thank you for having me. Once upon a coconut, it's about to take off. So look forward to a big 2024. That's right, baby. Let's do it. We're going <laughs> only one way up, upwards and onwards. Absolutely. Now, in conclusion, the power of celebrities and branding cannot be underestimated in today's competitive marketplace. Celebrities have the ability to captivate audiences, influence consumer perceptions, and elevate a brand's visibility. And by associating with well-known figures, brands can tap into the emotional connections and aspirations that celebrities represent, right? Establishing this strong and relatable image, it's so important. And leveraging social media platforms allows brands to engage directly with their target audience, fostering authenticity, which is so important, building trust and expanding their reach. And the combined impact of celebrities and social media amplifies a brand's message. It drives brand awareness and ultimately it contributes to long-term brand equity and to stay ahead in the ever-evolving marketing landscape, harnessing the power of social media and celebrities and influencers uh, is a potent strategy that will without a doubt propel a brand towards success. That was our famous Hydration with Heart segment. That was the awesome Blaze French. You could head directly to onceuponacoconut.com or you can check them out on the gram at onceuponacoconut and do check out Blaze as an influencer on social media at Blaze French. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. That's Blaze French with two Fs. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut, 100% pure coconut water. Imagine a drink that's nutrient-rich, powerfully refreshing, naturally sweet with no added sugars, not from concentrate, zero additives, low in calories, absolutely no artificial flavors, and is so tasty that it will become your new favorite beverage. Enter Once Upon a Coconut, the absolute best-tasting coconut water you will ever try. Available in four refreshing flavors, pure, chocolate, pineapple, and sparkling with energy. Do your taste buds a favor and pick up some today at onceuponacoconut.com.